1990, an Italian geologist named Angelo Pitoni would find an unusual stone while visiting Sierra Leone, a mysterious artifact that has baffled all who have studied it. A local Fuller chief was said to have given it to Pitoni, a blue stone with mysterious white lines upon its surface. After returning to Europe, Pitoni took the stone to the Institute of Natural Sciences of Geneva and then University La Sapienza in Rome for further analysis. To his surprise, tests revealed that it was not a turquoise or indeed anything that could officially be identified. Furthermore, the blue stone didn't correspond to any known mineral. But the most intriguing thing is its color. Researchers still do not understand how the stone has acquired or retained its color. This even though several universities and laboratories have analyzed the artifact at great length. It seems its color remains a mystery. Mysteriously, at the University of Utrecht, the stone underwent several tests with use of strong acids, but none of the acids could affect the stone. It was even heated to over 3000 degrees Celsius, yet its composition wasn't altered. When a small piece of the stone was pulverized and viewed under the microscope, it curiously lost its color. Now known as the Sky Stone, according to analysis, an amazing 77.17% of the stone is somehow made of pure oxygen. The remaining percentage was divided between carbon, calcium and another unknown element. When researchers crushed a piece of the sky rock and mixed it with acetone, hexane and methylene and then enhanced the extractions with ultrasound, they were eventually able to locate an organic compound that is currently unknown to science. Dated at 55,000 years old, just what is the sky stone? How could it possibly be made mostly of oxygen? Is this stone a past remnant left by a once advanced civilization? Or maybe its origins are not even local to Earth. Amazingly, it seems that Pitoni's sky stone is not unique. There has in fact been similar finds in other places of the Earth, most notably Brazil. The other sample of sky stone was submitted to GRS Swiss Labs for testing and analysis by an anonymous dealer. Intrigued, American artist and designer Jared Collins tried to buy the small cutaway piece from the dealer so he could study it further but the dealer refused to sell it. He wouldn't even name a price for the larger full stone. It seems there are indeed other exhibits of this curious stone made mostly of pure oxygen in existence, yet the mystery surrounding their makeup and origin persists to this day. Peru is undoubtedly a jewel in the crown of ancient sites that can be found all throughout the world. Not only does it contain some of the most astonishing as yet unexplained polygonal masonry to be found anywhere, but it also contains many other anomalous, advanced features built with such precision and prowess, they are still utilized by modern-day man. Irrigation systems still flow with fresh water as if they were built yesterday, still providing water to the local residents who reside in these mountainous areas. Agricultural technologies, utilized by our more modern ancestors, the Incas, undoubtedly aiding in the flourishing of their culture. It is a place that possesses such advanced features, academia can merely resign themselves to a limited close explanation of such wonders, as merely identified as pre-Incan. This without any explanation as to how these ancient groups who predate those who they have studied in depth, were aware of such advanced, elegant solutions to farming, water sourcing, building, and many other miraculous techniques for survival, among these notoriously inaccessible cliffs throughout the Inca Trail. However, deep within the Andes, far away from the well-worn tourist routes, is possibly one of the most perplexing ancient ruins of them all. Known as Napahuaca, it is a rock-cut ruin that is seemingly placed alone in a place of no initially obvious significance, no indication that it was linked to any existing pre-Incan ruin, yet the precision and indeed obvious effort that went into the creation of this anomalous artifact is undeniable. Carved into the mountainside, strongly reminiscent of false doors, 
features that can be found among many ancient ruins around the world, that according to numerous ancient legends, were used by spirits to enter and exit the realm of the living. It is intricately designed, features smooth, seemingly laser-cut surfaces, which in regard to its dating is nothing short of astonishing. Found at an altitude of nearly 3,000 feet above sea level, it contains many baffling features, which may indicate why this seemingly inconspicuous location was selected. The ceiling and floor of the cave entrance, for instance, not only appear as if it was hewn with laser-like precision, but were also carved at two precise separate angles, one of 60 degrees and another of 52 degrees. These angles, intriguingly, are also found within the Great Pyramids of Giza at numerous locations. Furthermore, whoever constructed this possible false door somehow picked the only spot upon the mountain that contained traces of a mysterious blue stone. This blue stone, only found within this specific spot, has for many years been utilized within modern technology for its unique characteristic for its piezoelectric properties, a type of crystal capable of generating an electrical charge, used by radio manufacturers for many decades within receivers. The rock chosen for the specific location of the carving is also, intriguingly, magnetic in nature. What's more, if one travels exactly halfway around the world to the UK, the false door aligns perfectly with Stonehenge. Why was this false door created? How was it created with such precision? What tools were utilized by ancient man to achieve these feats of ancient engineering? Why was it placed at this specific location, a place that has been discovered to contain mysterious blue crystals with unique electrical properties? Is this false door, like many alternative researchers have postulated, a portal of some kind? Allowing the teleportation of an ancient advanced civilization? We find the location, the precision involved, and indeed, the other intriguing characteristics surrounding this mysterious anomaly, highly compelling. We recently covered the enigmatic megalith known as the White Rock of Vilcambaba within Peru, showing how this rock was in fact abandoned, abandoned midway through being harvested of blocks to be used in the nearby polygonal masonry, with many other sites, many still strewn with blocks cut with a natural appearing face, but a right-angled interlocking body. Yet upon the white rock still remained other mysterious patterns, such as that of the 90-degree steps cut into the stone. We have identified this kind of stone cutting previously, such as at Machu Picchu, clearly used to help construct the polygonal walls themselves, but also at other, until now unexplained, unfinished stones many found throughout Peru. Naupa Iglesia, for example, found just outside the astonishing ancient ruins of Olente Tambo, a mysterious megalith that many, including us, previously presumed was possibly some elaborate deliberate carving, a throne, or possibly, like the false door, meters away, an ancient portal of some form. However, when one approaches said rock with the same eye as that of the white rock, one quickly finds matching stonework finished and installed as that of the water fountain found within Olente Tambo itself, thus further supporting our hypothesis of these types of stone cuts and indeed step patterning found upon them is indicative of unfinished, abruptly abandoned stonework, many left unliberated or strewn among their ancient quarries. As with the many other discoveries made, once one begins to perceive unexplained artifacts of this nature in the correct way, they suddenly make sense, and the supportive evidence simply flows from the hidden into plain sight. How this, or possibly another, clearly advanced yet once Stone Age civilization made the cut marks into the solid pink Aswan granite found upon the unfinished obelisk among many other megalithic blocks found within the Aswan quarry within Egypt, however, is yet another mystery yet to be unraveled. But by identifying and distinguishing between what were enormous megalithic block quarries 
And what were those of the baffling polygonal blocks is, we believe, the correct path to take if one wishes to unravel the mystery of just how this lost civilization operated, what they were constructing, and hopefully explain who they were and indeed where we came from. It is a pursuit which we find highly compelling. We have, in the past, explored, although albeit briefly, the astonishing, perplexing, and as yet unexplained ancient ruins that can be found within the ancient city of Aksum, located within modern-day Ethiopia. One of the main reasons we have repeatedly touched upon this exquisite site, a place located so far from the academically claimed civilizations, who some daring academics would even attempt to claim as the builders of such, its remarkably remote location alone could be seen as a smoking gun in regards to a conspiracy regarding the chronology of man. However, what we find even more incredible regarding this site, the fact that the site is renowned for its obelisks, often named in mainstream reports as the site of a singular obelisk of Axum, instead of the accurate plural, obelisks of Axum. A ruse mystery history suspects is due to the toppled obelisk. Not only are there many obelisks at the site, so sharing it online as merely the site of the quote, obelisk of Axum, is not only inaccurate, but we feel clearly an attempt to stifle people's discovery of this toppled obelisk, which has been estimated to have weighed hundreds, possibly upwards of a thousand tons in weight, once carved, transported, and erected at the site. Located in a place now known today as Axum City, it is located within the northern regions of Ethiopia, found within the northern Stele Park. Furthermore, the obelisks alone contain even more evidential features to indicate that these structures were not only built by a lost civilization, but the same civilization, possibly responsible for the Great Pyramid's construction and many other ancient ruins throughout the world, for these perplexing false doors permeate the world's ancient foundations. Any ancient site which we come across during our explorations of antiquity, adorned with false doors, we know are extremely old ruins. False doors permeate nearly all ancient sites and ruins throughout the globe, and their true purpose for being remains a complete mystery. Additionally, if the fact that false doors indicative of the ancient pyramid builder's architectural signature and the toppled obelisk weighing hundreds of tons is not enough compounding evidence to convince you that the site was once the work of a lost civilization. The underground chambers at the site, actually created using polygonal masonry, should be the final nail in the investigative pursuit for all. Thus, directly connecting polygonal builders to architectural signatures found throughout the globe, most notably ancient Peru, even Giza and the Great Pyramids. Who were these elusive builders? Obelisks are clearly indicative of an ancient Egyptian construction, yet regardless of the reality that this is a rarely shared factual lead, connecting Axum to the pyramid builders themselves, and indeed the makers of the false doors, and the additional polygonal masonry is an incredibly interesting link. Due to previous research, we know particularly regarding the casing stones in Giza, the polygonal casing stones upon the pyramids were of a significantly younger age than the highly eroded sandstone pyramids. Yet, here it is in the same build which displays false doors, a feature which does, in fact, date from the same era, a perplexing enigma to unravel. It is a mystery which we find highly compelling.